What's up guys, Eric here, Mr. Fired Up Wealth. Today I wanna to bring you five stocks that I would buy now for April of 2021. Now these are all stocks that I like, that I own in my portfolio, that I might not necessarily be adding to, but I've taken a look at all the stocks that I think really have a chance of, of running in April. And I'm a long-term investor, so generally when I'm buying, I'm holding long, but I do think these have opportunity to be maybe in potential swing plays in the month of April. I'm gonna show you the stock, a little bit about each stock and the technicals on it. So without further ado, let's just get kicked off and get right into it. The first stock, Amazon. Now, Amazon, if you look at a chart, this thing has been trading sideways for <laughs> what seems like forever. So this is a longer chart. If you take a one year chart on this thing, you can see that we've bottomed out at about 2,800, three different times. And you can see we've kind of topped out around 34, $3,500. So we've traded really in this channel. In fact, you could, you know, you could draw basically this channel up here and, and uh, you can see that we're kind of just trading this range since all the way back to, I don't know, you could call it uh, July of 2020. Now, of course, this was one that was helped by the pandemic, but I don't think that people are going to be going away from Amazon, even as things reopen. If you've gotten used to ordering certain things, you're still probably going to use them. Plus, with Amazon Prime, you get things like the Amazon Music and the streaming services. I think a lot of people are probably a little bit more hooked on that. So I see Amazon being sticky. I think that the stock here is attractive just from what you get in terms of earnings and what the, the value is. I mean, it's an expensive stock. It's, it's a 73 P ratio, but I've been in the stock since $500 and it used to be, you know, something similar to like what Tesla's P ratio is now, but you can see on this chart, I mean, it's traded sideways for quite a long time. This goes all the way back to, you know, basically July of 2020, 73 P ratio. That might sound like, you know, it's like it's expensive, but when you look at the growth behind it, there's definitely opportunity. Now it is a one and a half trillion dollar market cap. So of course, keep your expectations in check. This thing's not gonna just double overnight, but I certainly can see it going higher in April. I think that if you bought this stock around this price, you know, especially if you can get it under 3K, but if you can even get it where it's at now, you know, around $3,000 a share, I think you'll be happy. I think what could even happen with the stock is it could revalue itself to a higher uh, rating. So if you look at, like a five-year chart, you know, you can see this kind of trades in a range and then it kind of revaluates itself. I could see it going up to, you know, if you held this thing till the end of the year, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw $4,000 on the stock. Obviously, I'm not a financial advisor. I can't tell you what to buy or sell. I can't predict the future. I don't have a Palantir or crystal ball, but I do like Amazon. The next stock that I want to talk about is going to be Shopify. Now, Shopify, I think, is a good stock if you are can get it around a thousand dollars a share it's trading a thousand ninety right now this is a little bit more expensive a little bit more of the hyper growth at 433 pe the, you know this company helps small and mid-sized businesses basically be able to sell their their stuff online to do business online and that's not going to go away anytime soon i mean digital transformation is here to stay these guys have a sticky model where it's kind of recurring customers keep coming back and they can grow and uh you know if you look at the chart it's again you know this thing was trading back in august at about the same level a thousand dollars a share it ran up all the way here to the high was uh 14.99 it's about 1500 dollars, and it's come back anything around a thousand dollars you know if you look at another long-term chart let's just pull up shopify and you look at a chart, this is just trading view. If you guys want a trading view account, you can get one for free. I'm not paid to say that or anything, but uh, it is it is a good service, I think. I've, I've got the pro or something. But you can see this thing's kind of been trading, you know, really in this, you know, range. So, you, you know, not quite as clean as the Amazon channel, but you can see it's kind of topped out. You know, if you buy this thing, you probably have a good chance that it's going to, you know, have some support around 850, 875. And you know the upside's probably you know fifteen hundred plus, but I wouldn't buy it expecting to get fifteen hundred dollars overnight. I'd buy it around a thousand dollars a share, hold it long term, you know, and maybe this time next year you've got a fifty percent gain and you're maybe even higher than fifteen hundred dollars a share. So that's the second one. The third stock is Costco. Now this one has kind of been going through a consolidation. You can you can kind of see a trend here. All three stocks so far. These are stocks that 
benefited from the pandemic and a lot of people are kind of dumping them. Now, Costco is a little bit late. I mean, you could have gotten this thing, you know, it actually dropped down to $317 and it is kind of bouncing off that line. I don't think it's too late to get into the stock, but it would have been better, obviously, to get it closer to that 320 mark. This is a 34 P ratio. What's nice about these guys is they have that subscription kind of recurring model, you know, with the members paying for their, their, you know, their annual dues. I've been a Costco member for, I don't know, years and years. I've had the stock since maybe 2014, 2015, but we buy most of our groceries there, even some big ticket items there. We have the executive memberships. We get money back, but you know, since they have that kind of subscription membership type revenue model, you do pay a little bit more of a higher premium, which is why you see like a 34 P ratio. I'm comfortable paying a 34 P ratio on a stock like, like Costco and it pays a 0.83% dividend yield. If you look at a, a chart on trading view for this one. So here's a one year and it, this, this thing went way lower than I ever thought it would. I mean, um, if you kind of look at this chart, it kind of bottomed out in May around 295, just under $300. It didn't quite get there. I thought maybe it would even retest that $300 mark. It bounced kind of off 307. You can see it's bounced, you know, pretty healthily from that 307 line. So, you know, this one pays a nice dividend. It's kind of dividend growth investing, DGIF type play. You know, I think it could be back into the 350s or even $400 over the next year or so. But the nice thing about all three of these stocks, in my opinion, is they're nice long-term holds. They're quality companies. They're big. They're big names that you know have kind of gone through a consolidation or a sell-off period that I think have opportunity to to rebound from these levels. So that is number three, Costco. Okay, guys, the fourth stock is going to be AMD. Now this one's a little bit maybe riskier than the other three because it's you know 37 P ratio. I actually think that's not terrible for what you get here. It doesn't pay a dividend. Um, I do like Nvidia in this range as well. So I mean, you could, you could, you could do either Nvidia or AMD. So really, the fourth pick is two stocks. You can pick one of the two or buy a little bit of both. I I have a full position of Nvidia because I've been, I've been in it for a while, and I'm uh, I think I'm at 135 bucks. I'll just tell you what I've got on Nvidia. Um, Nvidia, I have, um, I've got about 70 shares at 70.788 shares around 150 bucks a share so i've been in it for a little while i'm up nice on it you know um but anything under 500 dollars on nvidia i think i do think is a buy and i you know I, i'm not buying it just because i have a full position but i did add some amd this morning around these levels um and i don't have as much as of amd so i've got a smaller position amd i'm trying to build it so I do like this one, you know, if, if it can hold this, this range, I think it has a good chance of bouncing higher and going up to say 90, $93. So if this thing breaks down and say it gets below 73, something like that, I could see the stock maybe going a little bit lower, but let's just look at the technicals on it. If you look at AMD now, you've seen that we've tested, you're seeing a trend here, right? A lot of these stocks have kind of come and tested these same ranges. So we're literally, you know, 73, 85. This is algo dri driven stuff, guys. It's not, you know, it's not rocket science. This is computers. 73, 85, 73, 76, and 73, 86. I mean, come on. <laughs> Within a penny, this is September uh, of 2020 at 73, 85, and it literally missed it by a penny above it just here on March 8th. And now you can see we're kind of, you know, we kind of bounced off that and now we're kind of retesting. So could we get back to this 7386 level? I think it's possible, right? So I think it's an opportunity to, to buy in this range, knowing that if it breaks this yellow line, it could go a lot lower. I think it probably holds this line and you see it back in the $90 ranges sometime in 2021. So for me, this is on my radar as an opportunity to buy either here or in April to try to get it around this, this 75, 73 to $75 range as a long-term hold. And I think you'll probably be happy with this one. They're going through an acquisition, you know, right now trying to get Xilinx, you know, and that causes a little volatility because of the way that they're structuring that deal, et cetera. But you can see the trend with all four stocks so far, they're kind of trading this big range for many months, kind of consolidating. You get that consolidation. It's like a rubber band. You, you coil it up tight, eventually it snaps and goes one direction. So AMD or NVIDIA, let's look at an NVIDIA chart. This is kind of your bonus pick. A lot of these charts, 
you can see we're in these high trends and then they kind of broke down and went sideways. So if you look at this one, this goes back to August 2020 again, and you can see same kind of thing, right? 468 and then magically, you know, 462, you know, it came right back to that range from that September 2020, you know, in March when it, March 8th, a lot of these things kind of had their short term bottom and, you know, you can see they kind of bounce off that and they're kind of retracing back they could retest. This is the same kind of deal. If you can get this stock under $500, you know, keep a close eye on it. I always dollar cost average. If this thing breaks 462, I mean, it could go down to, you know, you could, you could hypothetically say maybe it's somewhere in this 391 range. You can use Fibonacci's and all kinds of fancy, you know, uh, technical analysis to get you different numbers, but just looking off simple trend lines and moving averages and RSI's and things like that, you know, to me, this, this stock also looks like a pretty good buy. So, so far, we've covered four picks, but really five because NVIDIA and AMD are tended together. So what would be the last pick? What is number five? Stay tuned to find out. Okay, number five, guys, is Teladoc. And obviously, a lot of these, you know, stay-at-home, work-from-home type stocks have been hit really hard. Right now, the, the mantra in Wall Street is, you know, sell anything high P, you know, sell anything that's, you know, crazy growth or speculation, sell anything that's ARC, you know, buy value, buy cyclicals, anything that was work from home or stay at home, sell that and buy this other stuff. To me, you've kind of already missed the boat. I mean, we were trying to prepare in our group to, to essentially, you know, have a barbell around last summer, last fall, and positioning more into some value. And some of those value names I've actually written and sold, and I'm taking the cash and putting them back into these names that I like long-term for growth. Now, Teladoc to me is one where if you zoom out on this and look at, say, a, a five year chart, you know, this thing was back here at fifteen dollars. It started to take off before the uh, the pandemic. And you can see that, uh, you know, it was basically trading around one hundred dollars a share. So it kind of made this nice pop. They announced an acquisition, made this nice pop. I did a, my first video on Teladoc. It was about ninety five, one hundred dollars a share from that point on it obviously popped because of the whole, you know, pandemic and it just went nuts. And this was way overdone at $300 and now it's kind of coming back. And you can see if we zoom in and look at this red line, you know, this is literally, let's go to a one year chart. So this goes all the way back to June of 2020, this red line. And you can see where the first time it touched that was this 168.50 back in November. So again, around that fall of 2020, we had a little bit of a correction. Then we had this massive run up from 168 and almost double to 308 and it's come back. So what I'm saying here is my fifth pick, Teladoc. I like it. You have to be careful with it. If it breaks this 168.50 range, it could go a lot lower. You might see something like 150 bucks. You know, you might see something um, if you kind of draw back this line. You know, it could come down all the way to this yellow line if it breaks this 168. So understand the risk if you buy here it could go lower and you're probably gonna have to dollar cost average. But I think there's a good chance it probably bottoms out around this 168.50 range, that it finds support again here on this red line, and then it goes back the other direction. Will it go back to $308 you know, in a month like it did last time or a few months? Probably not, but I like this as a long-term hold. You think of the acquisition with Livongo, they can do a lot of different things. When you, when you look at it from the 10,000 foot view and say, where's this company be, gonna be in five years? I think there's a lot of opportunity even with you know, the, the open up trade and everything else, people still want the convenience of having a virtual visit. If you just have a pink eye for a kid, you don't wanna necessarily go to the clinic or the doctor. You might just wanna make a phone call, get a prescription and go grab it. So I think you're still gonna see a balance. And I think with all of these work from home type stocks, I think you're going to see more of a balance. Not everybody wants to work in an office all the time. Not everybody wants to work from home all the time. I think you're going to see a blend. And in a, in a recent survey that I, I just read this morning, it talked about, and it was something like 15 or 20% say they would love to work from home all the time. You know, like 15% say that they would, you know, not, they want to work in the office all the time. And everybody else, you know, like 70% of the people that they surveyed said they would like a mix of both, be able to work from home when they want and work from the office when they want. I think that's what you're going to see more of. And I think you're going to see things like Teladoc, where we as a society just live more in a hybrid virtual world. It's not going to be all virtual. We still want that human connection, but this stuff's not going to go away. So you think of the docu signs 
And then, you know, the silly thing, you think like CrowdStrike and those that are selling off. Yeah, they're, they're expensive. They have high PE ratios, but cybersecurity is not going away. You know, those stocks are probably getting sold off, in my opinion, more than they should. And so I can name off, you know, 20 different stocks that I think are good buys at this range. You know, CrowdStrike at 175 long term, you're probably happy with that, too. And there's a bunch of them. And that's what we talk about in Discord every single day. We do live streams. You know, I post a watch list of what I'm, I'm watching, which stocks I'm targeting. You know, I post what I'm buying and selling. You know, the group posts what they're buying and selling. If that's interested, you know, so- sounds interesting to you, check out Patreon, join the Elite Plus tier and join the community, join the team. You know, we, uh, we're working hard trying to stay patient with, uh, with this girl's story. I know that it can be really frustrating when you see your stocks down. I mean, I'm down quite a bit from my highs as well. But everything, I look through my portfolio and say, I've got conviction on every one of these stocks. The story hasn't changed. You know, yes, there's inflation worries. There's this, there's that. But I'm still confident that the stocks I'm buying are going to be worth a lot more in five years. And I don't need the money right away. So for me, I like putting my names in growth. I like having a balance. So make sure you have, you know, some of those value plays and some barbell. But when you're looking at, you know, these stocks I'm picking here, Teladoc's probably your riskiest of the other ones. I mean, Amazon, probably not going anywhere, right? You, you think of uh, Costco. I, I don't think Costco's going anywhere. You know, you think of all the stocks that we talked about so far. You know, Shopify, maybe that has a little bit more of a risk profile. AMD and NVIDIA, I don't think they're going anywhere, you know? So if I were to rank them from highest risk to lowest risk, I mean, Teladoc's probably the highest risk, you know, then Shopify, and then kind of down the line. But um, I like all these companies. I think it's a nice balance of larger companies with nice risk reward. At these price levels, I've given you some ideas. Obviously, I'm not a financial advisor. I can't tell you what to buy or sell. But if this is helpful, please subscribe to the channel. Click the subscribe button and there's a little bell so you get notifications. Make sure to please give me a thumbs up. It helps the algorithm. Um, Drop me a comment. That really helps out a lot too. But I appreciate your time and attention. Check out some other videos on the channel. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.